Two years ago, I felt extremely overwhelmed. I was a wife, I was working, my husband and I were remodeling the house we actually lived in at the time, and I had just found out that I was actually pregnant. It just seemed like every drawer that I went and organized immediately got messed up. I forgot where I kept things in the kitchen. I did not meal plan. I never knew what I was making for dinner. It would come seven, eight o'clock at night and I'd realize I had set out no meat to thaw. There was never any food in our fridge and so, so often I would go to sleep at night with a sink full of dishes downstairs haunting me until the next morning. So the idea of not only having my husband and I to take care of and work to do and the house to maintain but also adding kids to the mix really terrified me and I remember thinking several times, boy, if I can't keep up with the house now, how in the world am I gonna be able to keep up with it once we have a kid or what about if we have a couple of kids down the road? It just was really overwhelming to me to think of managing a home that I couldn't manage when there were even just two of us in it. So fast forward now two years, we sold the house we remodeled. We have a beautiful one-year-old daughter that we absolutely adore. We stayed in my folks' attic bedroom while we remodeled this place and we actually just moved in about two months ago. But not only has our location changed and the amount of people in our family, but also my whole mindset around keeping a home and around simplicity and around having extra time to do the things that I love doing. And so today I'm just sharing with you eight tips. It's not eight. So today I'm sharing with you eight tips that I either already implemented when we lived at our old house or things that I've applied since moving in here that have totally changed the atmosphere and changed my productivity rate and really caused my life to just run so much smoother. Some of these might seem super easy and super simple, but just by applying them, they've helped me so much. And you probably do a lot of things on this list, but I feel like I was kind of behind when it came to a lot of these traditional, like everyday tasks that you should be doing that I wasn't doing. So stay with me on some of these where you're probably like, this is ridiculous, I've done this since I was four. Tip number one, dishes. Now every single evening before I go to bed, I make sure that the kitchen is picked up and clean. That includes loading the dishwasher. So I always put all the dishes into the dishwasher and I try and hand wash anything that's left if there are pans or things that don't fit in the dishwasher. I either start it or if the dishwasher is only like half full, then the next morning after I make breakfast, I will put all the breakfast dishes in the dishwasher as well and immediately start it. I do this every single day and it's helped me so much to stay on top of the dishes. And it's so much more motivating to come down the stairs in the morning and not see a sink haunting you, waiting for you to scrub clean all those dishes that are now caked with food. I know, super simple, but it's changed my morning. <laughs> Tip number two, laundry. One of the first things I do in my morning routine now is when I wake up, I put in a load of laundry. I collect all the laundry throughout the whole house. I collect all the towels, all the things that we've worn the day before, and I start a load. Every single day, I make sure I do at least one load of laundry in the morning, and then if we have anything extra, I'll do another load in the evening. This way I never have extra laundry and on the days when my husband's working or he's gone a longer time and they're just a lot less clothes, I will take all the sheets off the bed and wash those. I will wash all my daughter's blankets. I'll just do those random little things so I'm never feeling behind on laundry anymore and that is just the best feeling. And I realize if our family grows that I probably will have to do a lot more than one load of laundry a day. But just getting in the routine of immediately putting a load in in the morning has helped me so much staying on top of it and just making sure that I get a load done every single day consistently. 
Tip number three. This is one that I've started applying since moving into this house, and that is to never go to sleep with a dirty house. I've tried and set the goal that since the day we moved in, I wouldn't go to sleep with a super horrendous house. I think there was one night after like a Bible study or something where we were both really tired and we just went to bed, but even just picking up for five minutes the clutter, making sure that the kitchen's clean, sweeping the floor, something like that, makes coming down in the morning so much more motivating and I'm so much more excited to start my day when I don't see immediately like 10,000 things I need to do on my to-do list. Tip number four, meal planning. Now this is really embarrassing, but I will link down below my very first video I ever made, which was on meal planning, and I would say the tips in it are still really good. Um, anything else, I kind of cringe when I watch it, but I will link it down below. It has some good advice in there. This is still basically what I do. Every Sunday night, I plan out meals for the entire week, and I only focus mainly on dinner meals because that's kind of the hot spot of the day where my daughter's getting really fussy and usually the house is a mess and we're in the middle of a project. So just having my meals planned out and knowing what I'm making ahead of time alleviates so much of that stress. So I still do meal plan every Sunday. I usually grocery shop Sunday or Monday as well. So I highly encourage you if you don't meal plan but you feel like you have a little bit of a chaotic time period when it comes to dinner time, I highly encourage you to meal plan. It will help your life so much. It's one of the biggest things that I emphasize you do. And by the way, that video is created for people like me who hate the idea of meal planning and tons of strict structure. So if you are one of those people, I hope that video is helpful to you. Tip number five. Since moving into this house, I decided I really wanted to stock up a little bit of extra food in the freezer for if we get sick, if someone stops by and we want to gift them with just like a chicken pot pie or some frozen soup or whatever it is. But also if I'm gone out in town and my husband has my daughter and he doesn't really want to cook something for dinner, there's guaranteed to be food in the freezer that's easily prepared. So now, Every Sunday, I plan out one extra thing that I want to make extra of and freeze during the week. And Monday is usually my day where I'll cook something in bulk. So far, I've prepared and frozen tons of chicken pot pies, soup, chili. I've made marinated steak and tons of chicken and frozen that. And I can't tell you how much easier it makes those evenings where you don't have time to make dinner or maybe you found out someone's sick and you want to bring them a meal and rather than having to spend a whole bunch of extra time that you didn't schedule into your day to make something, you can just pull something out of the freezer. The instructions are written right on the plastic bag that you put it in and it makes it so easy to either gift that to someone or eat it later in the week when you don't want to cook. So I highly encourage, if you don't do this, to cook some things in bulk and freeze them. You don't have to have an exact day. Do it whatever day works best for you. I found for myself that having a specific day of the week that I can plan my day around, knowing that I'm going to be cooking extra food and it's gonna take a little bit of extra time, really helps me, but do whatever is easiest for you. I really hope it will just simplify your life a little bit more. Tip number six. Have you ever found some items in your house that you really want to get rid of? But somewhere along the process, they kind of find their way back into your wardrobe or back into your decor. Now I keep an exact basket in my daughter's room that immediately, as soon as I decide, I don't like this shirt, I don't want to keep this, this is not necessary, I put it immediately into that bin, and as soon as that bin is full, I dump it into a bag or into a box, and I deliver it to Goodwill or to some other place of donations. This helps me so much with not constantly having these little piles of of like, oh, that stuff I want to get rid of, that stuff I want to get rid of, but I have to actually go there and I don't have enough stuff to go there yet. But it also helps me from keeping stuff that I really just need to get rid of. And it really prevents those things from finding their way back into my home. So I highly encourage you to get a basket or get a bin, put it in a drawer, put it in the closet, and as you decide you want to get rid of things and donate them, just print them in that basket. And as soon as that basket is full, you can go and donate it. Number seven, you remember how I mentioned at the starting of this video that I would organize a drawer and I'd open it up a week later and it would be totally unorganized? And I'd be finding with myself that even though I knew where to print the forks and I knew where to print the cups, I wouldn't do it even though 
I had set an exact spot to print them up in my cupboard. Labels. Labels are the trick. At least they've worked tremendously well in my case. A lot of times I'm the one that does the dishes because I'm home the majority of the time and it's shocking to me how often I will lazily print something in the wrong place merely because it's more convenient. So finally in my old house I decided, you know what, I'm going to label my entire kitchen. I'm going to have a label and a place for every single thing that I have, whether it's silverware, whether it's mugs, whether it's some type of blender or mixer. It was incredible. Although I had gone through and organized my kitchen millions of times in the past and it just hadn't held its organization, the results were incredible. I was so shocked because I had gone through already numerous times and purged things and cleaned things out and reorganized things and nothing would stay. And I was the one doing the majority of the disorganization even after I knew where everything belonged. So labeling is so key and I see an immediate difference in myself being reminded, taking that little bit of extra time, merely because I see that label there that reminds me, ah, this is not where it goes. And so I highly encourage you to label all of your kitchen cabinets. In fact, I encourage you to label everything in your house. I'm still in the process of going through and labeling everything. Right now I'm working on my kitchen, but I've gone through and labeled all my drawers, all my husband's drawers. I wanna go through and label all my daughter's drawers, all the pantry cupboards, and just get everything organized and everything labeled because I know it'll stay so much longer with just those little helpful reminders on there that when I'm lazy and when I'm tired, I don't want to fulfill. Lastly, have you ever felt like you spend your entire day running one item after another up and down the stairs? A great tip that I've heard from someone once was to print a cute little basket or a laundry basket at the bottom of your stairs and as you find things throughout the day that you know don't belong there and they need to go upstairs, you can merely put those things in the basket and as soon as either the basket is full in the middle of the day or at the end of the day when you head upstairs to go to bed, you just take that basket up with you and quickly place those things wherever they belong. This prevents me from having to run up and down the stairs like five billion times a day just delivering like a pen, a pencil, a piece of paper, a file, you know, a shirt, whatever it is. And it keeps me more productive because I'm not having to waste time backtracking and constantly doing the same thing over and over again. All right, you guys, those were my simplifying tips for today. I really hope that they were helpful. I hope that you got some ideas out of them. I know so many of them feel so basic and so simple, but it's the basic simple ones that I have the hardest time applying. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know if it was helpful. If you are new here, please consider subscribing if you are interested in simplifying your life, in home decor videos and laying out your house in a way that is clutter free. And stay tuned for more videos because I have so many more to come in the future. Bye! Keeping a home and simplifying and minimize, and minimize. I feel like, but something else has changed besides our location. But something else has changed besides just, hey, I usually grocery shop, I usually grocery shop, I usually grocery shop somewhere through the weekend. All the pantry, all the pant, all the pant,